though Europe is still coming to terms with the deadly attack on Brussels on Tuesday morning. We're joined now, now by one of the leaders of Ireland's Muslim community, Sheikh Umar al Khadri, with the reaction from within the community to these awful events. Uh, Sheikh Umar, thanks very much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. How did you hear about this, these events in Brussels? I was actually in the flight uh, towards Brussels, Aventum Airport, flying from Dublin. Um, you were flying into the I airport. was flying into Brussels at the same airport, absolutely. Oh. And uh, when we uh, were flying, the captain announced that we were going to divert to another airport uh, without announcing the reason. It was only when we touched down and I opened my phone and I received notifications, I realized that an attack has happened in the same airport that we were due to arrive. Okay. Now, for, I know you're, you're a spokesperson and representative of, of the Muslim community, but personally speaking, when you hear about this happening in Istanbul or happening in Brussels or happening in Paris, what's your personal reaction, first of all? Well, these attacks, wherever they happen, uh, whether this is in Turkey, Istanbul, mm. in Iraq, in Syria, mm. or in Europe, uh, the response is a response of anger, response of shock, and a response of absolute anger at these people that are killing in the name of God, in the name of religion, mm. and our religion, um, where our religion does not at all um, condone such violence. In, and, and it's very upsetting that people are doing that in the name of our religion. And innocent people are getting killed. So when the attacks are taking place in, for example, Belgium or France, a country that we as European Muslims can relate to much more than in Turkey, than in Pakistan or other countries, it's much more emotional um, because we can relate to it. Uh, Brussels airport, Zaventem airport, I have traveled to it on dozens of occasions. And uh, I know the departure area very much. And I can just, you know, imagine uh, when that uh, attack would have taken place. So it's very emotional and very upsetting. Mm. So the response is a response that is an emotional response, but also a, a response full of anger at these people mm. and uh, with absolute condemnation that these attacks can never be justified in the name of religion. They will say they are justified. They will say that they are the true followers and other Muslims who do not follow them are apostates, are wrong. They're, they're, they're going against the religion. Now, what, how can you argue against that when these people are so convinced, so utterly convinced that they are in the right? You're absolutely right. That's what they say. They say that we, the majority, 1.6 billion Muslims in the world, are wrong. And this is why the most victims of these terrorists of Daesh happen to be Muslims. Most of its victims are Muslims, and merely because we disagree with them, and we say that you do not follow the Quran, you do not follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, and um, and, and we respond to it, of course, by uh, by a theological in a theological way. That's to say that you know, according to the Quran, according to the primary sources of Islamic teachings, the Quran and the Sunnah. The, this conduct, this behavior is absolutely un-Islamic. It is anti-Islam, it is anti-Muslims, and it is anti-human. So our response is again a response uh, which is a theological response. And therefore, Muslim scholars around the world, from Al-Azhar University in Egypt up to scholars in, in, in Syria, in Iraq, in Iran, I myself have um, attended a, a, approximately more than five different international conferences in Dubai, in Iran, in Pakistan, but to talk about this. Because international conferences are great, yes. and you have to get together and talk about how to come. But what about, is there any way to get out into these communities, into these areas where, where young men are being radicalized? Are Muslim leaders doing enough? Are they actually going out and talking to these men? And, you know, is, there, is it also the responsibility of leaders in the community if they suspect a young man may be being radicalized or a young woman because there are women involved as well. Is it their responsibility to pick up the phone and talk to the authorities? Well, that is a very good question and I absolutely agree that uh, it is a responsibility of the Muslim community to be vigilant and and this is what we have been doing three weeks ago in Ireland when there were two radical preachers, hate preachers, yes. coming to this country. We, as the Muslim community, uh, we raised the alarm that, you know, it is not healthy for these individuals to come here and to engage in, on a platform where they cannot be challenged. So the question whether Muslims are not are doing enough, I think that people have to realize Muslim scholars have been doing a lot condemnation, anti-radicalization training courses mm -hmm. are taking place. I think we have to understand that the problem of terrorism is a multi-dimensional problem. It has a political aspect, it has a social, economical aspect also. And of course the religious aspect. We can only address the religious aspect. The political aspect of it, the social aspect of it, has to be 
um, addressed by the policymakers, has, has to be addressed by the politicians. And, and that is something that is their responsibility. So as far as the Muslim community is concerned, they are fulfilling their responsibility. Okay. Uh, I lived in London when I was a teenager in the 1980s, and there were regular attacks by the IRA, including the Hyde Park bombings, which were terrible. And I remember being sick to my stomach, yeah. but I remember also being very careful with my accent when I was on the tube or when I was in going into a bar or a restaurant. Do you, Muslims in Ireland and across Europe, do they feel that now? Do they feel that they are being watched, that the people are regarding them with fear and suspicion? Muslims in Ireland and Muslims abroad have actually the same experience as the Irish people 20 years ago, 30 years ago in England. And that is because that certain individuals from within the Muslim community are committing atrocities and the whole community is painted with the same brush. And the consequences of it are the rise of Islamophobia, the rise of anti-Muslim sentiments. So Muslims are vigilant, Muslims are worried about the rise. M mosques are being attacked. Women, uh, when Muslim women, when they're walking with their hijab, their hijab is being pulled off. These attacks are happening. Recently, an Irish uh, academic, Dr. James Scar, um, he launched um, a, a study, Islamophobia in Ireland, which which opened eyes of people that, you know, Islamophobia is a real issue. It's happening even in Ireland, a country that is very friendly, a country where people has can relate. has been tolerant. It yes. has been very tolerant, a country where people can relate to the experience. But even in this country, we see that now Islamophobia is rising, anti-Muslim sentiments are rising. And these are rising absolutely after the attacks happen. There is an increase in these, in these attacks. Sheikh Omar, thanks very much for talking to me. Thanks very for welcome. coming in Thank today. You.